Welcome to Power Up Talk Show, a talk show where we bring together community leaders, inspirational people that are making an impact in our community. I am Sandy Spady, your host, and I am so excited to begin this journey to inspire, to motivate, and empower. First of all, we're going to kick off our show with the amazing Dion Bass. <laughs> Songbird Cocktails. Bring it to Dion. Hey everybody, how are we doing? Uh, Sandy, thank you for having me as always. Ben, it's wonderful meeting you. You too. Um, I would like to kick off everything with a little bit of coffee in the morning. If you know what I mean, it helps you get going. And so my first cocktail is going to be inspired by morning light. Um, so I aptly call it the Cafe Morning. Um, it has a French name too, but it's a little bit complicated. Um, so first off, we're going to start off with a little bit of cold brew that I infused with pumpkin spice this morning. It's a little tricky pour there. All right, now that we got the hard part out of the way, we can start with the good stuff. So this is a Shanky's Whip. This is actually an Irish vanilla cream bourbon. We're just going to do a little bit. We're not going to do a whole lot because, you know, it's morning time. And... A little half ounce of piece there. La -da -da. And then we're going to add our kind of our second star of the show, or I guess we would call it the co-host, our grind espresso liqueur. Now, this stuff, I've used it in, in a ton of cocktails over the years. And it's just good old faithful whenever you want something, coffee or chocolate, it really does come in handy. Very, very uh, utilitarian. Do, 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 do. All right, now that we got that done. Uh, Sandy, I don't know if, uh, uh, I know, we have a mutual friend, Doreen Blakely. Um, this is her salted caramel rum from Modern Matriarch. Uh, this is also a very uh, utilitarian rum. Um, it can kind of go with just about anything uh, that'll have cream or anything that's dessertish. And we're just going to do a little bit over, somewhere close to three quarters of an ounce on this guy. All right. Now that we got that all done, let me give these guys a shake. Any song you think about when you dance, like song if you're dancing. Bird. <laughs> I don't know if it's a song, Dion, but I feel like I could just bust out a song right, right now. Yes. Sing it. Songbird, come find the song in cocktails. I'm not a singer. I'm a dancer. I sing everywhere. You know it. I also dance everywhere. It's... Yes. I'm going to fill those guys up. We should have a perfect pour there. Is this close to a martini, coffee martini? Well, I could make it into an espresso martini, yes. And it would be delicious, absolutely delicious. All right, so we've got those out of the way. Move those to the side. And what I like to finish this off with, uh, just to kind of give it that morning inspiration, is a little bit of bourbon cream. Now this is a bourbon cream made by a Buffalo Trace Distillery. Um, it is absolutely delicious, and totally, if you, if you don't have it on your bar space at home, it's totally worth having. We're just gonna kind of make a little bourbon float on the top. Give it a little bit of coolness and a little bit of cream. True artist. Da, da, da. All right, and that is the drink in itself. Now, what good drink doesn't need a little bit of chocolate shavings on top of it? Absolutely. So this is a chocolate shaving with an espresso bean. You had me an espresso bean. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little espresso bean in there. It actually looks really good. I like it. Voila. And we have our cafe morning. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Dion. You're welcome. All righty, first of all, cheers. Cheers to you. I am so honored to have my first official, official, official guest here on Power Up Talk Show. 
Not only is he a rock star, successful business owner, he is an amazing community leader. He's a motivational speaker. He's a good human, and he's my friend. Oh, thank Cheers. you. That was nice. Thank you, thank You're you. Welcome, thank ben. you. Appreciate it. Mm. Good stuff. Do I have a little stuff on my lip? Oh, that makes it fun. Okay, all righty, Van, <laughs> tell me. Uh, we While are, we're ready to go. Oh, we are the same old, right? Come on, all let's do it. those yeah. decades, which it means seasoned. Uh -huh. And we look good for that, I think, <laughs> right? Yes. The seasons of sales, customer service, connections, mm -hmm. and now we both inspire to speak, to help yes. others, right? Yes. Tell me, You're I know. You're good at it. Oh, you are great too. There's a lot of podcasts. I, I have to tease Van that I go to bed with Van. It's podcasts. There you go. Podcasts. Van the podcast. Yes. Thank and you. one of the ones that stand out to me, it's um, make a difference. Right. It's using your God-given ability. I just want you to share with the audience your mm -hmm. God-given abilities yep. and why you think it's so important to share. So I believe that, you know, we have this, as you say, God-given talent and skill set inside of us. And if we don't use it, then we're wasting it. And I always preach that, you know, I don't want to go to heaven one day and say to God, thank you for all the talent you gave me when I was on earth. I'm sorry I only used 60% of it. So my mission my whole life is to try to use every ounce of talent that I have as often as I can. And when you say, you know, to make a difference on one of my podcasts, um, it's real important that we manifest that every day. So I believe in saying things out loud. I believe in saying, you know, affirmations, looking in the mirror, and because there's nobody more important to accommodate and to fulfill your tasks than the person in the mirror. That's the one you should be talking to. And um, I say out loud all the time, today I want to make a difference in somebody's life. And when you say that over and over, it's going to happen. It's just like a salesperson that says, I want to be the top salesman of my company someday. If you believe it, it's like I quote Napoleon Hill, book he wrote in 1937, Think and Grow Rich. One of my favorite quotes of all time is, if you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. And I believe that those are our God-given abilities of what we already have inside of us. I love that. And I love that. I actually speak to women on finding their super strengths, yes, their super power strengths. And you have a great reputation for that, too. Oh, thank you, Ben. Yeah. But what would you say would be your superhero strength? I know you have many. Oh, boy. The number one that you said, okay, you cannot lose this. Like, I cannot have this taken away from me. Right. So, um, I can leap tall buildings. <laughs> yes, that's my, it's, that's it's your height. Yes, yeah. I love that. Um, you know what? Just, uh, I'm not trying to um, impress your audience, just impress upon them that uh, we all have superhuman powers, like you say. And I believe mine is helping uh, bring out the best in people. Um, you know, I had 400, almost 400 people working at my last firm, and a lot of them fulfilled their dreams working there. And um, if we have the ability, we have the responsibility. And I believe I have the ability to help people get from point A to point B. But sometimes they just need some encouragement. They need a bright light um, or direction, you know. And it's because mostly it's not something I was born with. I experienced it. I spent 40 years. I've been on straight commission since I've been 23. If I don't kill something, I don't eat. <laughs> and so, you know, I grew up and you know, a family of preachers and teachers. No one told me how to be a businessman. I had no training, I had no mentors. I had to figure it out. And uh, when you have the largest independent real estate firm in the Midwest, you gotta figure it out in a hurry. And uh, bottom line is you gotta use your fundamentals and the skill set you already have inside of you. And one thing we know for sure that you don't have to have a PhD in is you treat people well. And you know, I quote Mary Kay from Mary Kay Cosmetics a lot, Mary, Mary Kay Ash. One of the things that she said years ago that stuck with me for life is, she goes, pretend everybody you meet, I don't care who it is, what their title is, if they, you know, who they are, pretend everybody you meet has a sign around their neck that says, make me feel important. Well, we have that ability to make people feel like they matter. Yes. 
So, and I know that I'm speaking, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir because we have, you know, as you said, we're friends and we talk a lot. And I know that you have that same mindset, which is why I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing, because you're doing the same thing with your, with your groups and people that you're preaching to. Yes. It's such a gift. And like you said, our God-given gifts, you, you never want to look in that mirror at the end of your life, right? And say, what did I do? Did I bury them? Yeah. Did I embrace them? Or yeah. did I, you know, make them ex yeah. explode to help others? Well, at 64, you don't want to look in the mirror at all. <laughs> I think you can look in that but, mirror, man. I think you're but doing I, great. Uh, but I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree with you. You know, we look outside of ourselves for so many things in life, and it's right here yes. inside of us. We don't need to look farther than our mirror. Because we have these abilities. You know, I do believe that God didn't say, you're talented, you're not, you have a great skill set, you don't. We all do. Yes. But some of us choose to use it, and some of us choose just to let it sit. Yes. Now, you're not wrong. I've got friends of mine that are totally not motivated. Do I still love them? Absolutely. What's important to one person doesn't have to be important to another. It's really what's important to them, right? And Bingo. That is what's important for That's a difference. All that matters, you know, a lot of times we try to, we, we judge and people and criticize people because they're not like us. Well, that's wrong. And that's wrong with society because that happens all the time. Yeah, and who really could keep up with us too? <laughs> right on. I yeah. mean, our busy- You've got more energy than our, I our, our business is our yeah. happy spot yeah. because we just are wanting to inspire people, right? Yeah. And make I a mean, change. Yeah, you want to make a difference. It's like, you know, we had a, con we had a conversation about being on boards, like, if you're going to accept a position to be on a board of some company or, or somebody's uh, consulting or advisory committee, make sure that you have a, something that you're going to do to make a difference or else don't do it. Yes. You know, we shouldn't do anything in life unless we are going to make a difference. Absolutely. And sometimes it's not doing anything. It's just smiling at somebody. Yes. Maybe somebody just needs you to be nice to them. That's making a difference. Yes. I always, every day, I try to do something nice to someone, yes. if it's just driving it on yeah. the interstate and letting that person in, or helping someone the other day at Costco yeah. in a wheelchair that couldn't reach something. And it's just those little tiny things that add up to big things. And right? how'd that make you feel? I felt great. See, there you go. Yes. So it's not just for them, but you know, you're making a difference in somebody else's life. And I think that now more than ever, and please, Listen to my podcast, the Van D podcast, Apple, Spotify, your favorite podcast platform. This is the stuff I talk about. I don't talk about how to become a millionaire. I talk about how to live a great life and be the best version of yourself. And guess what usually happens when you're becoming the best version of yourself? Your financial goals always seem to follow that. Because you're doing what you love. Because you're doing what you love or you're, you're doing a good job at it. Yes. So another podcast that I love to listen to, it was about being bold, mm. right? Oh, being yeah. bold. We all need to be bold oh, at you some like that point. One. I like yes. that one too. That one. And it's because the difference is sometimes we don't feel like being bold. We may be a little scared to take that next adventure, that next step, but being bold. If you tell yourself, once again, mindset yeah. on being bold. What do you have to lose? Regret. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Except for regret. That's exactly right, Sandy. So, you know, when I say be bold, be bold and not just your business life, but in your personal life. Don't be afraid to tell your best friend that you love them. I mean, you may not be ever, tomorrow you may not be able to tell somebody you care deeply about, I love you, man. It's okay if it's a dude. It doesn't matter if it's your bro. Let people know how you feel about them. And same thing in business. You know, I've been in real estate. This is my 40th year, and I, I can't seem to shake it. Um, I was supposed to retire 12 years ago, and it lasted about 10 minutes. <laughs> Um, but I can't be afraid to be in somebody's living room and they say, you know, there's 20, let's use Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. There's 2,500 real estate agents, about a hundred that are, the, there's about a hundred of us that are doing all the work, but there's 2,500 realtors. Some couple's going to interview three people to sell their house for them. You're going to sit in their living room, just like on a couch. And you can't be afraid to be bold. It's not unusual for me to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, there's 2,500 great agents in our city, but not one of them can compete with me. I'm not cutting them down. They're great, yes. but they can't compete with me. Yes. If you don't feel that way about yourself, 
you shouldn't be in that living room. That's not being cocky. That's letting your clients know, I'm the guy that's going to make all your wishes come true. Yes. And if we don't do that every day, then why get out of bed? If you don't think you're the best at what you do, then who's going to? I mean, you're not going to have people on the streets go, hey, there's some, you're the best at what you do. No. no. If you don't think that, no one else will. And guess what you do with that attitude? You empower your children, yes. your spouse, your coworkers, your boss, your employees. Everybody wants to gravitate to you yes. because you believe in yourself. Even when I couldn't see, I couldn't even spell real estate when I first got going. <laughs> but I had, I had to be comfortable saying, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, nobody on this planet's going to take better care of you than I will. And then it's like, you know, then if they use me, I'm like, uh oh, now what? <laughs> <laughs> and what I always say, what do I do now? Is I'm a seller, not a speller. There you go. Right. There you go. Another thing I, I think when you said influencing your children, I'm consulting a gal uh, that is with my Power Up consult Consulting and Coaching. Mm -hmm. And I told her, what greatest thing is for you to stand in front of that mirror in the morning mm -hmm. with your power pose of a superwoman mm -hmm. pose? And your daughter walks in and sees you saying, I am beautiful, I am powerful, yep. I am strong. It's the best compliment you can get to your children. Huge, absolutely. So I love that you and I both think like that. Yep, and you're a great mom. That's a great, great, great thing to do because our younger people need role models yes. now more than ever. Yes. You know, when I teach at UNO to these young people in entrepreneur classes, um, I teach a lot about respect. Mm. And that's one thing I think is a forgotten art is uh, people showing respect. When you become a respectful person, um, like, you know, one of the books I wrote called The Power of Asking, um, you know, you can learn how to ask people for business all day long. But if you're not that good human, yeah. they should not be giving you business. Yeah. So when you learn how to be respectful and like these young people say, well, how do I show respect at my age? I just did an eighth grade entrepreneurship camp at Nebraska Omaha uh, this summer and one of the young eighth graders raised his hand and goes, well, how do I show respect at my age? I go, when you see your mom or dad or sister going to get in the car, open the door for him. Yes. When you see your teacher get up to go outside, open the door. Little things yes. like that. If, you, if, 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 if somebody's water glass is almost empty at the, at the dinner table, don't wait for them to get up to fill it up. You do it for them. And then this, this becomes, this discipline becomes a habit. And before you know it, it becomes natural to these people. And then respect is just natural. Well, when you're a respectful person, man alive, people gravitate to you. I wasn't the greatest salesman in my career, but I was one of the most respectful. So my customers gravitated to yes. me. And that is something I also speak to high schoolers and junior high kids. Yep. And it's about, you know, it's really about finding your confidence from within and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Not where I'm at today, but where I want to go. And you're right, that simple things. I tell those high school boys, you open up that car door yeah, for that good date. For you. And I tell those young girls, mm -hmm. you stand there until they open up that car door because you're worthy of that. Yep, love that. Old school, new school, I love yep. that. Yep. Another thing that I just love about you that we talked about is okay. just our, our, our simple backgrounds mm -hmm. you know growing up mm -hmm. i came from you know a family restaurant which i love hospitality to mm -hmm. this day what is something with your just your great childhood that you could share to um inspire the audience you know i was a non-conforming rebellious rule breaker and i finally grew out of that in my 50s uh, just kidding not <laughs> Not really, um, but you know, I would say that what inspired me, I'll just tell you where, you know, I, I had no direction. You know, my family, my brothers and sisters, PhDs, teachers, um, close relatives, uh, preachers. I mean, so there's nobody in my immediate family in business. So, um, you know, I, I gravitated to, to people that were motivational speakers. Um, but one of the big things I gravitated to was the movie Rocky when it came out. And that's kind of my jam. I mean, that I walked out of that movie theater and I was like, man, that guy lives in a rat hole. That guy um, has, has no money, has no direction, but he wants to be the heavyweight champ of the world. And it did something to me. I created this discipline, this work ethic when I got in the work, workforce. And, um, you know, somebody can be smarter than me, but they're not going to outwork me. Yes. And I think that's, you know, so what I say is if, if you're outworking somebody, 
aren't you really smarter than they are? Absolutely. Because you figured it out. Yes. But I just inspired, you know, my mom was my inspiration. She treated everybody like they were the only people on earth. And so I grew up with a, a lot of love. I didn't know we didn't have any money because we were happy, yeah. you know. I rode a bike. My bike looked like something out of the Wizard of Oz, and my <laughs> friends all had 10 speeds. I mean, mine was a piece of junk, and I think I even had a basket for Toto on the front. <laughs> but, you know, um, so growing up, I just I was inspired by by love and the way people treat people. Yes, it's a solid background. And I know that's part yes, of your background, I too. Love that. You know. And you make me giggle because I love Rocky show. <laughs> At a lot of times with my woman with voices, I start da 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 There you da, go. Da. I mean, wouldn't it be great to just get a bunch of people and take yeah. the stairs? Yeah. yeah. So I got to tell you this real quick. and I, it, This is your show, but I got to tell you. I want to hear it. So Rocky was a big, huge part of my motivation. Moving forward 20 years, I'm doing a uh, radio. I had radio contracts with all the stations to advertise our real estate firm, and they said, we're going to buy you a jingle, part of our package. And so they said, you're going to get a company from Memphis that's going to call you and they're going to do your jingle. So the lady calls me and says, what kind of a jingle does Deeb Realty want? And I said, you know what? I love Rocky. I love the Rocky music does something to me. It motivates me. Let's do something with some of that kind of music. And she started giggling. And I'm like, what's so funny? She goes, you like Rocky music, huh? And I said, yeah. And she goes, well, I'll tell you what I'll do for you. My husband is Jimmy Jameson, the lead singer survivor who did all the Rocky music. I can get him to come in the studio and record your jingle. And I'm like almost dropped the phone. Wow. And so long story short, he did the jingle. I could I did not have every time it played, my phone rang from people going, is that Survivor? <laughs> because it was it was very clear. Yes. And uh, so look at how I manifested yes. that from 20 years before that all of a sudden now survivors sing in my jingle. I did not know. Crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's so well, amazing. It just, it just reminded me. Yeah, but I love that. Yeah. So you manifest stuff. You never know when it's going to come back and, and reward you. Yes. Because if you don't believe it, that you can achieve it, who else is going to believe it? You, you have go. to believe it, right? It all goes back to if you believe it yes. and you can conceive it yes. and conceive it, you can achieve it. Absolutely. All right, Van. I know you inspire so many people. Mm. But let me ask you this, who inspires Van? Besides the love of your life, your dog Baxter. My dog Baxter, we don't have a long enough show to talk about him. It. You know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, and I'm not just saying this because you're here, but people like you inspire me mm. because you're making a huge difference in people's lives. And so I get inspiration from you when I read your social media, when I visit with you, when we have coffee together. I get inspiration from you, but I get my inspiration from people that have been there and done that, and they're making a difference. I don't. I get inspiration from people that were not supposed to accomplish what they accomplished. Um, that's exciting to me, and I I love listening to preachers. Yes. You know, you can learn a lot about yourself by by listening to people preach the word of God. Yes, and I know you speak about this, and I speak about the five most important people are the five people you hang around with, the things you read, the mm -hmm. things you listen to. Yep. And it's so important to be around that positive attitude, the right people. Yep. And sometimes right now when I work with my 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 uh, consulting, I tell them the three Ds. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, decide what you want to do, what you want to delegate and delete. Love that. I'm sure you had to delete people. I, I it's on a, it's consistent. It's, it's, you know, I'm still at this age. You're a limit. You're, you're not letting people in um, because you, you know, maybe they're real negative. Maybe, you know, we live in a, a pretty negative society and, and you, the last thing you want to do is surround yourself around people that are the same way. Um, I'm not saying people that don't need you that are going through trauma and problems. I mean, my gosh, you got to be around, you got to be there for them. But I avoid negative news. I avoid negative situations because here's the thing. We're going to wake up every day and have an unforeseen challenge. Why, why have one, why have a challenge that's already there? Absolutely. But you know what? If you're around negative people, the first thing you should do is see if you can help them become positive. Yes. And if you can't. Yep. You give it a shot. There's plenty of people for them to hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> They'll find their crowd, right? Yeah. But you know, like, you know, you, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah, absolutely. And we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with, which is what you said. Yeah. I love that. Yep. All right, well, we're getting close to an end, and I just want to... No, yeah, go. I know. Round two will come. Come, Yes. 
But the, you know, I, I know he's an amazing book author, and I'm going to have you sign these before you leave. Oh, boy. But how do people, what do you want people to know in these last few minutes and I, your journey that I was honored to be on, your journey talk show? Yes. With KCRO, yep. the Boomer Station. Yep. Love the Boomer Station. Yep. How can you reach with our audience? How can they reach you? What would you yeah. like to share? So I'm so easy to get a hold of. I used to say for years, I'm in the phone book, but nobody knows what a phone book is. <laughs> um, you know, vandeeb.com, yeah. V-A-N-D-E-E-B.com. All my books are there. They're two-day deliveries. Um, I'd love to have them reach out to me. My email is van at vandeeb.com. I love to speak to small groups, large groups. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm there... If there's something that I can do to help them move the needle forward, that's what I'm here on this earth for. Well, Van, I am just so thankful that you're here today. You're Thank amazing. You. You're amazing. And I'm so happy that you were my first guest. Yes. At Power Up Talk Show. I yeah. I'll be your only guest. Okay, let's, 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 let's just continue. Do this. Continue. Yeah. continue. We'll All right. Guests. We'll just do yeah, our own we'll thing. Yeah, we'll just do the Van and Sandy <laughs> show. With that being said, I just want to thank my audience, and I'm looking forward to more amazing episodes on Power Up Talk Show. Go out and make a difference and be the change. Thank you.